Hi everyone, my name is Martin from Isopod Corner. Thanks for joining me on the video today. Uh, have you been wondering or contemplating the idea of housing or having some Isopods of your own, but feel overwhelmed, not sure what to do, what to get, how to care for them? Um, so in this video, what I've done is I put together some kits for any newcomers into uh, Isopod collecting to easily get started with. Uh, the kits contain uh, everything from your substrate, from the moss, from, from bark, uh, some cuddle bone. So basically everything you would need uh, to house your isopods uh, in a starter container. This is a one quart, I would say one quart container with a bunch of ventilate ventilation holes on each side and on the top as well. I'll put together a kit with you. This is the small kit and then we'll make a batch of uh, a bigger uh, 15 quart uh, container if you want to house more isopods. Okay, so first we'll start off with the container. Approximately a one quart plastic bin with a cover that comes off. It also folds up. Take the cover completely off. You can just fold it right up. There's a, um, a see-through one, a very clear one, and a darker colored one. Totally up to you which one you prefer. Isopods do prefer a darker environment. Um, so regardless of which one you take, uh, if you keep them a good portion of the time in the dark, they'll, they'll do better that way. Um, so what you get in the kit is some leaves, you get some sphagnum moss, you get some bark for hides, you get a little bit of cuddle bone as a source of calcium, and you get your substrate. So now we'll mix it all in and add some isopods into our new container. First things first, let's take the lid off of the clear plastic container. We'll use that for the demonstration today. Here's the substrate that goes down first. And there we go. The substrate is made up of a variety of different ingredients. We have some sphagnum moss in there, some lump coal, some organic soil, some peat moss, uh, some orchid mix as well. And there's approximately almost an inch of uh, substrate at the bottom. Okay, next we'll add our bark. These would be the hides. The isopods would congregate and get off the substrate if need be. We'll add the cuddle bone in one corner as well. Then in this baggie here we have a combination of some sphagnum moss and some forest moss. Uh, isopods actually really like to eat forest moss. Source of food as well, and the sphagnum moss is there to help uh, retain the moisture. And finally, in our kit, we have some some leaves. And you could spread those around wherever you like. You don't need to put them all in. Next, we simply moisten. Our moss section here, keep that moist. And that's our enclosure. What's the last thing we need to do to, add, to make this even better? Add isopods, of course. So, let's add some dairy cows. We have six dairy cows in here. And there they go. Exploring their new habitat, already getting underneath things and exploring. Yeah, so the last thing you would need to add here would be just their food, um, either uh, some, some veggies uh, or 
or some powdered format. I sell some yum, high quality isopod food. They love that stuff. It's a full protein diet. But yeah, so in this case, what I would do is um, put the opening, the door opening on the side where there's the sphagnum moss. So it's easy access to just uh, go in and uh, moisten the moss as needed. But yeah, this is a fully enclosed um, isopod bin. Perfect for a few animals, great starter kit. I sell these on the website, everything that you see here for $25. Uh, and um, this makes it a great gift, first time gift for kids uh, or anyone that's looking to get into isopods um, uh, and give it a try. Um, so this is the small kit. Next we'll do the uh, larger kit. Now for the bigger kit, it's a 15 quart plastic container with lid, lockable with the handles on both sides, raise up. <clears throat> That's a 15 quart bin. Then we have the substrate, we have some bark, we have some dried wood. We have some sphagnum moss and some leaves. Um, and I'll add a little bit of cuddle bone as well. There you go, just broke that piece off. Okay, so we're all set. We have all the ingredients we need to mix in and the enclosure for our isopods. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first step, let's add our substrate to the bottom. This will add about an inch of substrate. Spread that at the bottom. So substrate again is made with some organic soil, some peat moss, some sphagnum moss, some orchid mix, uh, and some worm castings, which I forgot to mention earlier. Okay, so we have the substrate down. Now we could add our hides in the form of bark. Place those down. The bark's really important. It allows the isopods to get off the substrate. If the substrate happens to be too damp, it allows them to regulate their, uh, their bodies and find a climate that's suitable for them. Next, we'll add some dried wood. Again, this is uh, another area for them to hide, but they'll also eat over time the dried the dried wood. Next we'll add our sphagnum moss and forest moss combination in a corner that we will always keep damp. As a matter of fact, I'll spray that now. Make that nice and moist. Keep an eye on that so that it is always moist. And the rest you'll keep bone dry. Next we'll add a few leaves. Again, hiding spots and food. And finally, some cuddle bone. One thing I have to note with this bin, the 15 quart bin, is I don't pre-drill the holes for ventilation. I'll leave that totally up to you. Um, the holes would be great on the side, in the front, uh, front top lid. Uh, uh, that'll allow uh, air to circulate through and it's gonna keep your um, moist side, moist longer. If you start putting holes on this side, then of course you're gonna have, this is gonna dry out much quicker. So essentially that's it. That's a, a full enclosure ready to house some isopods. The next thing we need to do now is add some isopods. And for this bin, it is slightly bigger. I'm going to add some Pocelio Bolivari, very 
awesome looking isopods and we'll let those go in their new home. There you have it. So this 15 quart bin and all the accessories and all the ingredients that you need to make this bin, I sell this for $50 on, on the website. Again, great, um, great starter kit. Okay, so as you can see, putting the kits together, it's fairly simple. <clears throat> you get all the ingredients you need to make your little isopod habitat. It takes out all the guesswork, um, so you'll feel comfortable that when you're putting isopods in here that they're in a, a suitable environment and that, that they can thrive in for a one quart container approximately with ventilation holes all around and some on the top. And then we have the 15 quart container. Uh, again, all the ingredients are in here. If you're starting off with just a few isopods, I would suggest going with a smaller container. Uh, if you have like six or, or seven isopods, this would probably be good for up to 25 isopods, I would say. And then you want to move up to, a, let's say, a, a six quart or a 15 quart container. Uh, and uh, yeah, you decorate it the way you want. Um, replenish the, the, the moss as it goes down. Um, you can add more bark, more wood, totally up to you. Decorate it how you want. Again, you want to have a gradient in temperature and in humidity. Uh, so on one side, keep it always moist. They need moisture to breathe. And on the other side, keep it bone dry. Don't even spray it. That'll allow the isopods to acclimate to whichever area they prefer. So hope you enjoyed the video today. My name is Martin from Isopod Corner. Thank you. Take care.